Hey, 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 welcome to the Wisnowski Sports Report. How's everybody doing? Doing great. Okay. Guys, it's so hot out here. I mean, it. I don't know. How hot is it? I'm not going to go there on air, Lou. Okay. I'm just That's gonna right. Say, I'm just going to say it's hotter than the midget of a sunburn. Ooh, that is hot. Right now at 5.07 Central Standard Time, okay? Okay. They want, they want that. It is 95 degrees, and I tell you what the heat. I tell you what the heat index is here in a minute. Pulling that up right now. Over a hundred. Hundred hundred and five. Uh, right now it's 96 degrees. It feels like 110. It's close. The the humidity is 51 percent. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And if y'all live in the Austin Travis County area, mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all heard about this program, but it's called Brown Santa. Uh, they help less fortunate uh, families and children during the holiday season. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we can basically say Christmas is right around the corner. Yeah, six you know, months. Yeah. Six months, and we get to October. Yes, you know, six. But months. it comes so, but it comes so quickly. That's what I'm saying. Like, right, start right. now, and then you won't be waiting to the last minute. Exactly. Right. But they, uh, this organization, they benefit Travis County Sheriff's Brown Center program. Uh, Monday, July the seventeenth, they're having their annual golf tournament. It's going to be at Shadow oh. Golf Club. Golf Club. 12801 Lexington Street. And <clears throat> if you want to register or become a sponsor, you can go to www.brownsenter.org forward slash golf, golf tournament. Registration has to be in before July the 10th. Uh -huh. 7 a.m. registration for breakfast. 8 a.m. is shotgun is the shotgun start. 1 p.m. is lunch. At the four-person scramble, five-dollar team of four people individual. Four, it's for four people, five hundred dollars, one hundred fifty individual. Registration includes breakfast, lunch, two drinks, tickets, green fee, cart, and range balls. And you get mulligans. Mulligans are available day of. So. So if y'all can, you know, even if y'all can't go, you know, try to donate something to, try to donate something uh, to them so they can try to help more families this year. And also, uh, let me, they also have, if you want to donate, you can go to that website I just gave you. This thing Thing is not moving. Okay. Technical difficulties. Never mind. Uh, they do have a PayPal Vimo link set up on the website, which your website I just gave you. Or you can contact Rebecca directly at Rebecca at brownsenter.org. Or you can contact me and I will get you in touch with this lady. Also, we now have an email address for the show. Nice. Uh, I will put, I will put the, I will put it in here if I can. And for some reason, I'm, okay, let's see. So that way everybody can have it. Okay. There you go. It's it's in there. And also, that's how that's how if you if if y'all like to donate to the show, that's how you can do it. You can go to that that uh, email address that's tied directly in with the PayPal account for the show. 
So if you like if you like the content we do and you want to see better content out of the show and if you like to and if you would like to you can donate it's all up to you we're not forcing you to do anything you don't want to so let's get on let's get on with the the topics for today guys first thing who watched the who watched the nba final game me i did what a run what a run for the denver nuggets yes I had, a feeling, I had a feeling it was gonna come it was gonna happen regardless yeah you know, uh whether it was gonna be miami or boston because i feel like this denver nuggets team was was pretty magical i i don't think anybody would be able to stop them okay here's here's the winners off of no. off, off of the nba pick for game for the finals brad and lou are tied at first at uh for first place because they both said five games and it and it went five games well i thought it was going to either go five or six because the, re- the reason why i said six because i wasn't sure you know brad and lou tied tied for first i mm-hmm. came in i came in second and james you came in at third what did i say seven six hmm okay which you know Ain't too bad. No. You know it's, it's pretty. It's a pretty good uh, little. Uh, oh. pretty, we uh, we all did pretty good on that. You know, I I yeah. thought I really thought it was gonna go four. Why well, did no? Mm-hmm. I, I definitely didn't think the Heat were the Heat were gonna get swept. I knew they were gonna try to at least win at least one game. They could have won two, but they they. I feel like that team wasn't. They weren't. Re- no team was ready for the Denver Nuggets. Oh no! Even Miami. Even Miami. Yeah. The, the Nuggets just came out and and just, and just played some played some great ball, man. And I tell you right now, if it wasn't for Joker, I don't. I don't think. I don't think the Nuggets could have done it. Well, I don't know about no. that. Was they were loaded that. That was a pretty loaded uh, Denver Nuggets team, but but still, I mean, yeah, Jokic is is the man, but I feel like that team, like I said, that team is loaded. Could you imagine him and Luca on the same team? That would be well fair. That would be unfair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dallas Dallas would be unstoppable with those two. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and your finals uh, MVP is no surprise. Joker got it. Yeah, the uh, no surprise is right. That's no surprise there. No, no, of course not. He had a tremendous uh, postseason, like like over what five hundred points or something like that. Something like that. Four nine. Yeah. 498, 500, something like that. Very close. That's a monster number. Given, given he only played in, let's see, they they swept, I think they swept, what, all of them except for this one, right? Okay, Dad, yeah. we'll be waiting on you, bro. Yeah, he said he'd be on in a little bit. All right. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's... That was no shock to me when I heard that the uh, Joker won the MVP. I mean, he's just he's just a freak of nature, is all it is. That's all. Uh, then we got the NBA draft coming up in a few weeks. No, that's next week. Well, next week. Yeah. It's Thursday. June the twenty second. Rounds one and two will be will be at eight seven central. Oh, uh, yeah, and San Antonio won the lotto. The San Antonio Spurs won the lotto, so they get to pick number one. Yeah, the Mavs had the tenth pick. And here is the odds on winning the NBA championship next year. No surprise, okay. they got Denver to repeat. Uh huh. And Boston is right behind them. Milwaukee Bucks. Revenge. Revenge. Uh, Phoenix Suns. 
uh, Lakers, Warriors, Mavericks. Let's see here. Boston, they got Boston picked at 500 to win it, 550 to win it. They got the Bucks picked at 650. Phoenix Suns at 850. And the list just goes on. But Detroit Pistons, I'm sitting here laughing at them. I'm sorry, you Piston fans. But this is just too funny. Yeah. Bottom of the list at plus five million. Five million? It, yeah. Is that, is that a typo? Terrible. No, no, no. That's not a typo. No. Actually, five million. Wow. Yeah. So oh, boy. I can just hear some guy in Detroit cursing right now. Mm. <clears throat> So they're basically saying there's a snowball's chance of them actually winning next year. And they got and they got San Antonio at plus two million. Wait, I'm gonna check this out. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh, that's that's what the that's what the list says. Mm-hmm. You know, but. I would I would say uh, if Joker stays healthy, that then that the Nuggets could uh, could make another run. Yes, and we have free agency coming up in a uh, couple weeks. Two. July fourth. So, yeah. Go not, first. Go first. And yeah. I'm not I'm not for sure, but isn't Joker going to be a free agent this year? No. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Nuggets Nuggets better. Uh, when his contract comes up, they better do everything they can to keep him. You're right. Uh, Look this up right now. Then, the, I watched uh, one game of the Stanley Cup Finals. And that's when uh, that's when uh, the Panthers went up 3-1. I mean, 2-1. I didn't think, you know, because we all know that Vegas is uh, is known to blow uh, leads. Yeah, that's true. Like, but see, like, I feel like that series that series should have been a lot closer than what it was. Yes, but Vegas came to play, and they really. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dog on Florida too much because Florida came out. And they played a terrific uh, postseason. They had a terrific postseason. They just couldn't pull it off in the Stanley Cup Finals. Hmm. Las Vegas. That's, that's a pretty magical run. Like they were the eight yeah. seed. They were the eight seed. They beat Boston. They beat Toronto. <laughs> and then they beat uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah. No, 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 no. They beat Tampa Bay, and then they beat. Uh, yeah, uh, Carolina. That's right. Uh, yep. Uh, Las Vegas won won it in four games. So let me five five games. Five games. So let me go back and look at the NHL and see see who see who came the closest on that one. Uh, Brad had the Panthers in seven. Lou, you had the Knights in six. I was a little off. I had the Panthers in six. <laughs> James had the Panthers in seven. Yeah, I was off. <laughs> I was I was a little off myself too. So actually nobody nobody uh got that right in a in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, it was very it was very off like that. <laughs> it you know, it's just like wow. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing. You know, but with this doing these picks like this, you know, it's all out of fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this was their first Stanley Cup in franchise history for the for the Knights. Yep. Same, same as the first one for the Nuggets, too. Yep. Yeah, but the Nuggets have much longer wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. True, they did. Yeah, because Vegas is basically like one of those brand new franchises like the Seattle Seattle Kraken. Mm -hmm. True. Very true. And Dev, I see Devin's on, but I don't see him. I just see a ceiling. Hello. Yeah. How are you doing, ceiling? 
Raise the roof. Ray, 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 let's raise the roof. The roof is on fire. The roof is on fire. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, like we're saying, the first, this was the first ever Stanley Cup in franchise history. I say congratulations to them. Yeah, yes. And and to the Nuggets too. It's yeah. a, it's hard to win a championship these days. It yeah. is. So sure. It is. It's very hard to uh, win a championship. So winning your first one is not, is really good. I mean, that, that's the stepping stone. That that was a stepping stone for them. Exactly. Now they have a chance to you know to to go on and win more. You know, like, they just had to put the pieces together. Exactly. So true. It, it, it just five years. Uh, Devin, how you doing, Devin? Hey guys, how how's it going? Long time no see. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I don't know if you watched the show uh, a couple of weeks ago when I when we found out about your cousin, but I did send I did send you my uh, prayers and condolences uh, on the show. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's one of my cousins that I used to play online games with. So, oh, um, it, it was unexpectedly. So I was planning, I was a um Paul Burial. Oh, you're a pop. I'm just yeah, glad, was, I'm just glad that uh, he's not suffering anymore and he's in a better place. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Darren, question for you. Who's your NBA team? The uh, Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Brooklyn, 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 Brooklyn. Let's see here. But I don't think we're going to make this on uh, the playoffs this following year. They got them at plus nine thousand. I mean, nine, yeah, nine thousand to make the NBA uh, championship next year. Yeah, I'm not expecting a championship team out of the squad. I'm probably yeah. a a playing spot, but I don't expect us to be in the playoffs. Uh, what do you think about the uh, Denver Nuggets winning their first ever uh, NBA championship? It was it was a good um, it was very. Really, Good. It's different. It's not. It's not the Warriors, the Lakers, the Celtics, like the norm, like the normal that's been winning the titles. But I, I'm glad that Denver got the the nod in the championship. My my best friend. He's a big Nuggets fan. He was born. He was born there, so he kept up um, with the NBA Finals. But I'm I'm I wasn't surprised that uh, the Joker won the. MVP, of course, averaging a triple double in the finals. He's the first ever player to lead his team in points, assists, and rebounds. If I'm mistake, not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, and then a few games he played in, he had like what 500 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entire, entire postseason. You know, and that's- I think it was like six ninety or something like that. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's way up there. Yeah. Um. Actually, it's. Let me see that. I know I have it here someplace. That is impressive. Yeah. And another question for you, Devin. Before we move on, uh, what do you? Uh, what's your takes on the Stanley Cup Finals? Uh, the Golden Knights winning their first uh, ever Stanley Cup. Good for the Golden Knights. I'm not a fan of them. My team's Chicago, but um, but congrats to the Golden Knights. Um, John, especially Jonathan Quick, the the goalie, the backup goalie. Yeah, but I thought the Panthers would put a fight. Yeah, th- there was zero fight that entire series. Yeah, especially, yeah, it's like game, especially game five. That was that was like a football score. Yeah. You know what? I, yeah, I thought it. I thought it was going to go. I thought it was going to go the full seven. Same. I, I had the. I had the knights. Even though I picked the knights to win in seven, but I was expecting a lot more than um, one game from Florida after they beat Boston. Yeah. Upset Boston and in, in six games. And then they beat Toronto. 
And then the hurricane. I was twenty fifty on that series. Yeah. I I was I was expecting um Carolina to win that series, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. was, Florida shouldn't be hanging their heads. Shouldn't be sad. That they put something a show on. But what shocked me though was you know like I was talking to uh, James and Lou about. We all know that uh, the Golden Knights are known for blowing uh, leads. Yep. Yeah. For them to come back and win this in five, that shows something about the Knights. Yeah. They finally of course. Got stuff, they finally got this stuff together. And they just they they just trashed Florida in in uh, Tuesday's game. I mean, Nine to three. I haven't seen anything that bad in about twenty five years for a final. That game was yeah. over almost from the beginning. You know, y'all don't know I'm a Dal- I'm a Dallas Stars fan. Yes, of course. Uh, I don't kill. Right. I was, hoping, I was hoping Dallas would get in, but hey, I don't have nothing bad to say about the Golden Knights. They came out and they they did what they had to do. Exactly. I mean, I will give credit. I will give Florida credit for the run they had. I mean, you know, especially the, being the Bruins, which no one thought was going to happen. But you know, I mean, because Boston had you know the series wrapped up, two minutes to go regulation, and then the choke signal came on. They, you know, they lost the lead in, over, in uh, the third period with two minutes to go, and they lost in overtime. And the greatest uh, team in regular season history just collapsed in the first round. It's like, yeah, how the hell did this happen? And the first overall seed in the East. Yeah. Yeah. First, the President's Trophy once again. Is it the President's Trophy? Of course. That's what you said. Yeah. I know. I know you just said it, but I'm just repeating. <laughs> it, it pretty much is, Devin, because very few teams that win the President's Trophy rarely go on to win the Cup. In fact, most of them don't even make it past the second round. Oh, Chris, oh. I've been hiding. I've just been busy. Yeah, Chris uh, said, you, you've you been hiding, Gerald. I said, no, I haven't been hiding. I've just been busy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. What did, what, did, what did Devin go? He'll be back. Devin, you hide? I guess I guess I guess it's so hot. Devin had Devin's phone melted. <laughs> uh, well, that's pretty serious too. There he is, back. I told you, back. What the heck? Out. It just kicked me out. Do what? We did. It, it kicked me off. Like my browser, it just kicked me off the whole site. Huh. Oh. But yeah, you know, it's so hot. You're you're. I'm out. I ain't putting up with this. It's too hot. I'm gone. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, like I said, the Golden Knights came out, did what they had to do. Yeah. Won the, won the Stanley Cup. So maybe, may, maybe this is something they can build on and go on until next season with. Yep. Yeah. Well, if they keep their team together, yes. You know, because uh, you know, the, the ACs are on. Imagine I, you know, my poor window unit is struggling. Imagine watching the watch party outside the stadium. Watching oh, what? Watch imagine party. the imagine being at the watch party in Vegas outside of the stadium. Oh my god. A zoo. Oh my god. Uh who's ready for uh money in the bank? Me. Me. So oh, far the, the the man's money in the bank match has already been set. We got Ricochet versus Nakamoa versus LA Knight versus Damian Priest versus Santos mm. Escobar versus Butch. Has a bunch of new beats in there. Uh, I, I want LA Knight to win. 
I would like to see either Ricochet or Nakamura or Santos win it. Um, I, I have to agree with James. I I think not. Um, LA Knight's the best suit because there's a rumor that he's probably gonna cast on Wallens. Mm-hmm. Well, that that right. We I got something to uh fill, fill y'all in on on on, on that when we yeah. get there. The women's oh. money in the bank match. So far, we got Becky Lynch versus Selena, Selena Vega versus Zoe Stark versus Bailey versus Io Sky versus we we won't know who the last one is until tomorrow night. Yeah, there's one. There's one last spot for the women. And we all know that Bailey and Edo Sky are uh, partners with, with uh, Damage Control. Mm. Now, what's going to happen if if it comes down to Bailey and Edo Sky are the only two standing to go up that ladder? I think what for Edo? The turn on. The I'm going for EO. Can we see yeah. can we see can we see can we see a turn? Uh Edo Sky turning against Bailey? Oh Bailey on I, I see Bailey it. turning on EO. Yeah. Possibility. Now, like you were saying, Devin, you heard that LA Knight may cash in on Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. It depends on who wins that match between him and Finn Balor. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, at Money in the Bank, it's going to be Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yep. Uh, I think Seth, Seth has just been named World Heavyweight Champion, so they don't want to take him off right away after what, a month? No, they're, no, they're not. Yeah. No. And then uh, this past Tuesday on NXT, Ron ba- Breaker uh, called Seth out, and Seth said yes to the challenge for the for the World Heavyweight Title. So it's going to be Seth versus Ron Breaker, I think, uh, yeah. next the championship next week. Is that hey, next? after because gold rush is going to be two weeks yeah it's going to be during gold rush yeah yeah so that's going to be interesting because mm-hmm. we're going to have two great superstars going up against each other mm-hmm. and here and this is the match i cannot wait for right here this match, sorry if i'm loud this match mm-hmm. right here it should go down as one of the best in raw hit in the uh, pay per view history. We got the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, going up against Dum Dum. I mean, Dum Dum Mysterio. Uh, why is it a pay per view? Why is that pay per view match? It needs to be because there's history there. But I can guarantee you this right now. Co- I mean, Dum 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 is going to get his butt whooped. Mm-hmm. That's that's not a good match for Cody Rhodes. No, it's a tweener match because he's he has a match with Brock at SummerSlam. Yeah, that's what I mean. But it need but he needed a tweener match but in between, so that's why. How this match came about was uh, Cody was out there in a ring uh, talking about the uh, money to bank and and uh, SummerSlam, mm. and it comes old Dum Dum come out there, stop running his mouth. Dum Dums. <laughs> so Dum-dum. Cody basically told, basically laid down a challenge. And yeah, Dominic yeah. accepted. But one problem though. Dom Dom, I mean Dum Dum doesn't know what he's getting in with, with Cody Rhodes. Nope. Yeah, yeah especially he's, he's slapping him and then trying to run away. Because yeah. that ain't happening. 
But and I'll tell you right now, he think he thinks he think uh, the whooping he got from his dad was bad. Oh, he's getting it worse from Cody. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was worse. Cody is but, gonna turn Cody's gonna turn him every which way but loose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't be the surprised. How come you think they call him the, the American Nightmare? <laughs> Lou. What did Lou say? Why try to explain it to dumb dumbs? No, God, Lou. I'll <laughs> explain that another time. Okay. I, you know, you might have to explain to Jared, but I got it. You can explain oh, to man. me later. I was surprised that Devin guy, not you. Anyways, okay. moving on. Probably going to be a, and also at Money in the Bank, they're probably going to have the Intercontinental title match between uh, Gunther and Riddle. I, That's I, a squash I, match. I and then see, I can see that match coming. And then another match that we all know is going to happen. It's either going to be at Money in the Bank or it's going to be at SummerSlam. But it's going to be Solo and Roman versus the Usos. I think SummerSlam. You should save that for SummerSlam. Why? Roman needs to. Roman needs to defend the belt. He. Yeah, he does. He defend it enough. If if he's talking if, if, if last time Roman defended that belt was at uh, Clash Clash of the Castle. No, he he defended it at WrestleMania. Remember? Mm, that's right. He defended it against Cody. Yeah, so he but, hasn't defended it in a while. So he needs to defend that belt. If he can't defend the belt, strip him of the belt. But I'm saying, um, Roman versus Sol- Roman and Solo versus the Usos. What I mean, wait till SummerSlam on that one. No, he yes. needs to, he needs to defend it now. Like, not not the title. Not not. I'm not talking about the title. Oh, now, I know. Here's here's something I was thinking about at the last uh, after uh, last week's uh, Monday Night Raw when Jimmy uh-huh. accidentally uh, super kicked Jake. Yeah, that's back down, yeah. Right. Right. What's going to happen between Jimmy and Jay now? Nothing. They're going to be good. I, I really Nothing. think that Jimmy is going to be like, or J, yeah, Jay, Jay's going to be like, hey, that was an accident. Because it was an accident. He, he meant to super kick solo instead. Yeah. But it's crazy how um, I didn't expect um, is it Jimmy to turn on woman instead of Jay? I didn't expect that. Yeah, I didn't either. Well, yeah. Jay, Jay is he's easily manipulated. Like I, I feel like it's all a manipulation game with Roman is with Roman, Roman is Roman and Paul Heyman and Solo is in Jay's head right now. But what Jay needs to do is Jay needs to – they need to leave the bloodline. Like, leave it alone. Totally go away from it because they don't need it. Yeah. Solo doesn't either, but Solo's going to have to learn the hard way. You know, and mm-hmm. remember how Paul told Jay that uh, Roman's going to start uh, teaching Jay how to be the new tribal chief? I don't think so. Nope. No. 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 That's a bold faced lie. And you know, that was just a way of uh, um Paul being conniving as always. Yep. He's a little snake. Yep. Well he kinda had that in WWE, you know. He was he was that way he was that way when he was with uh, WCW. Yeah, uh, WCW. Yeah. ECW. Yeah, Paul Heyman has always been a little snake. Yes. But that's his hill persona. Like that's that's who he is. Like you have to understand. He's he's a snake. And uh, then, on, then on Raw, of course, you know, we were talking about the Cody and uh, Dom segment opens Raw. So, solid with a match set up between Dom and Cody at Money in the Bank. That's right. Yeah. Well, if you want a snake, I know. Dom, My slithering snake. Dum Dum just opened a uh, can of worms he ain't gonna be able to deal with. That's right. And that is. 
that can of worms is the one that he will turn into a giant nightmare. Uh-huh. He, at at the Cody uh, beats Dom Dom at Money to Bank, Dom Dom's going to have nightmares with Cody. I'll bet. Well. Uh, now, here is something I did not see coming. This leaves me with more questions than answers right now. Uh-huh. Damon Priest likely leaving Judgment Day and J.D. McDonough are joining. Already? Hmm. Oh, really? J.D. McDonough? Yeah, they had a backstage segment on Raw where they were talking and then Damien came up uh, after he won his uh, Money in the Bank uh, match. <clears throat> he came up and was like, and, and then... Uh, uh, then asked Damien or if if you win money in the bank or you, and I and I beat Seth, are you gonna cash in on me? Yeah. So that that's gonna be a little bit more seeds as well, like and uh, make sure that uh, I think Damien's gonna get kicked out or he's gonna leave on. And uh, I, Madonna, uh, Madonna, JD Madonna was trained by Finn Balor. He was. Yeah. That's why it makes total sense for 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 JD to join the uh, Judgment Day and uh, Damien to leave the Judgment Day. Because Damien doesn't need the Judgment Day. I would love to see Damien leave Judgment Day and join up with uh, LWO. <laughs> why not? That that would be beautiful. Like, Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't you imagine how stoppable they would be with Damien Priest? Use the muscle. And then uh, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins uh, uh, segment sets up world title shot at Money in the Bank. That was and, a... Uh, that was I that, agree that with, was I agree a, what uh, Devin was saying. I don't see them taking the belt off of Seth right now. But that was a beautiful... I thought that was a... That was an awesome segment. They wouldn't shut up. the The fans wouldn't shut up the entire time. Yeah, that was a that if that was uh if I, if I had to rate that raw that was that raw was probably a nine and a half out of ten. Oh and yeah, it, it was solid all the way all the way through. But you know, I agree with what Devin was saying. You know why J- Vince McMahon wasn't backstage? That's why. Thank God. I don't see them taking the belt off of Seth right now. Mm-hmm. Especially with him just having it one month. Yeah. I don't I don't see that happening. If if Seth does lose it, I see it at uh I see it either at SummerSlam, one of the money the money the bank ladder match gonna cash in on him, either at SummerSlam or some somewhere down the line. Because if you remember if you remember they have one year to use that title. I mean, that, uh... Yeah. From the, one year from the day they won the briefcase, they have one year to... But they can they can go after any belt holder. It doesn't have to be that main title. It could be a U.S. title, intercontinental title, whatever. I, can even they, go after, I, I don't they, like that. I don't uh, like that. They can even go after the NXT uh, heavyweight title. You know what? You know what WWE needs to do? They need to come out with something that that's very similar to that. In TNA, they had that feaster fired, uh, where they, where they got different briefcases, and you didn't know whether you had a pink slip, a uh, tag mm. title match, an inner or like That's their. Uh, huh? Finally, they had vision, and they had the world, the world title in, uh, yeah. a briefcase. Exactly. They need something. That would, here. Y'all that would be that would be that would be a damn good idea, there, James. I agree with you on that one. Ooh, we got rain coming. I just got I just got the announcement on my uh, computer screen. We got rain coming. Yes. But that we yeah. need rain over here. Uh, but what, so yeah. what do you what do you think about Charlotte's um, returning and? 
challenging Man. uh uh Oscar. Oscar Oscar's gonna have her hands full with, with Charlotte Flair. But what's crazy is uh Adam Pierce already gave uh Bianca Belair a rematch. Here's what I would do, okay. If I were if I was Adam Pierce. Now yeah. now this right here, y'all can agree with me or disagree with me. Have a triple threat match for the women's championship. I think that's going to happen at Money in the Bank. I really honestly do. I think that's going to be a three-way at, three yeah. way at uh, Money in the Bank. Well, I have a controversial take on Charlotte Flair, though. I think she's a Nepo, baby. She's a what? A what? Uh, Nepo, baby? Nepotism? The only reason she's in uh, WWE is because of her old, who her old man is. She's been okay. riding, she's been riding her, her, her father's coattails. But she's I just don't so, think she's but, that talented. But she, she's so talented, though. Like she has. I don't think so. I think she does. I, she's she's the alpha female of the WWE. She, there's nobody that can beat her. I, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, she she's a good in ring performer, but the only thing the reason why everybody. Uh, the reason why she's so big in WWE is because of her, like Adam was saying, who her dad is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not, this is, I think, and that's not necessarily. A bad. Thing. It's it's hard, and I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that as a crit. You know, obviously it is a criticism, but I'm not saying you know it may be unfair. As someone as someone who doesn't watch a lot of WWE, she may be really talented, but I think that the reason why she's so she was so pushed is because of her last name. And, you know, and it's, and it's just saying that it's unfortunate that, you know, when you have a last name like Flair, you don't, you don't get to stand out on your own, you know, and you get, you get shoved into the, you know, into a mold. You're going to be Ric Flair's daughter or granddaughter. I think it's his daughter. I doubt it's going to be the same way with Simone, Simone Johnson or Ava Rain. She's not, the, it's not the same. Uh, get uh, what what Adam was talking about. Okay, let's look at let's look at somebody else for example. Look at Cody Rhodes. Look where his dad was. The American Dream, Dusty. But Cody, it t- it- but Cody built his own legacy in the WWE. He did not ride his dad's coattails. Yeah, I I want to disagree because I feel like he was. It took Cody Rhodes twenty years to make his own way. And I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying I'm not saying. Let, let me let me let me explain. Um, there's too much. Let me sum up. Uh, the the problem is is that they get pigeonholed into being their the second or third generation, and it's very hard to break out of that. I don't, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they can't because Randy Orton has Randy Orton is definitely not Bob, but but you know for guys like Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase. Um, you know, it, it's it, uh, Charlotte Flair. It's hard to see them as anything other than who their father was. The Curtis, Uso, or, or to, Cur- Curtis, Curtis Axel, Curtis Axel father, uh, is, a, yeah. is a, a fine point on what you just said because he's not as good as Mr. Perfect. You know, and also, right. look, who, look who that their dad is, Rakishi. Yeah. And they, and they, they built a uh, name for themselves in uh, WWE. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's and I think it's easier for the Usos. Um, I think it's easier for a second or third generation talent to come along if they don't carry the name, well, like the Usos. You know, they don't carry the Rikishi name, so it's not like you associate them with Rikishi. And, you know, no. and and so it's easy. It's easier. And, and it's not a knock. It's not to say that Charlotte Flair is talented, but I think the reason why she got such a big push, especially early on in her career, is because of nostalgia bait. You know, all the people that grew up with Ric Flair, grew up watching Ric Flair, grew up rooting for Ric Flair or hating Ric Flair. So you know, you know, all the people that that were Ricky Steamboat fans, that like just were Ultimate Warrior fans, but just absolutely hated Ric Flair, or were just fans that ignore, or the kind of people that just don't like to don't like a winner, you know. The kind of the kind of fan that says, "Well, he's won too much," you know. When when Charlotte Flair comes in the scene, and I'm I'm not saying that I'm not saying she's bad. 
I'm not saying that she she isn't talented, but what I'm what I'm saying what my point is is that that she gets she gets such a big push because the WWE is always trying to catch her lightning in a bottle twice. What what about Natty Neidhart? Mm-hmm. Wasn't that um? Yeah, Jim 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 the Anvil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or okay. Tamina Snook or Tamina Snuka. I mean, James, remember when you and I were talking about? This. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's universal. Don't mistake me. I'm not saying it's universal because Bret Hart and Owen Hart, Owen was going to be bigger than Bret. If, if Owen hadn't had died, he was going to be bigger than Bret. Quite true, but he didn't even get that shot. So. But, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it's universal. I'm just saying it's a. It, it, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that I think that a lot of these these second and third and, and now we're getting the fourth and fifth generation superstars. They, they the reason they get picked up and they get over pushed. It is is that it, it's name recognition. That's what, that's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not. It's not a critique of the of the performer because you can only work with the script you're given. It that, that's. You you can't you know if if and I, this is a criticism of WWE not of the performer they get pigeonholed into being the son or daughter of their famous wrestling parent or or uh, you know or sibling or uncle you know and then and they can't and it, it's so hard to break out of that that you know I, I'm not I'm, what about Braun? Bre- what about Braun Breaker? Braun, I'm glad they didn't use the signer name with him because I feel like he's better than his uncle and his father. And I think that's the, that is my point, right? Is is that he gets to be his own character? He gets to be his own player. He isn't pigeonholed into just being the son of Steiner, right? You know, when you know, unlike other other players like you know, Ted DiBiase Jr. Yeah, no, but, he, he, but he, yeah, you look at him though, and you're like, "That's Steiner. That is a Steiner right there." He yeah, looks just like his gonna, uncle. Like, yeah, but he's not using but, that same Steiner. That's what I know. Right. That's what right. makes his character so bad. Because he's not following in his in his dad and uncle's footsteps. He's at the yeah, and that gives him a chance. It gives him a chance to be his. I had no idea he was a Steiner. I didn't. It gave him a chance. Tra- no, I didn't know. know. Just no, look at him. He looks are, like are you guy. serious, Adam? He looks. Yeah, no, I didn't know. Well, in my defense, I don't watch a lot of WWE anymore these days. So, um, my 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 beef with WWE started about ten years ago because I felt like so much stuff was just recycled stuff and watered down Attitude Era stuff that it was like I'd seen it all. I'd seen it all. They weren't doing anything new or creative, and and the fact. The fact that when they went from two hours, when from the, when they moved Raw back an hour, when they added an extra hour to the end of Raw, and, and they made it three hours, and you know, working all the time, you know, I started working, I wasn't yes. able to dedicate three hours or five hours to WWE programming every week, and so I just kind of lost interest. Mm-hmm. And and my. I was I was excited when they announced that they were gonna they were extending Raw. They were gonna make Raw longer. I was like, okay, cool. So we'll get that last fifteen minutes when they go when they fade to black and somebody's getting beaten up. I'm like, that always drove me crazy. I hated those stupid cliffhanger endings at the end of every Raw. It drove me crazy. And then when they announced that they were extending Raw, I was like, cool. We'll get to we'll get to see the end of the show. And then they still then they're going off the air at eleven o'clock. And and they're fading to black as somebody's getting a beat down. And I'm like, that is you, you totally misunderstood. you totally didn't understand what we wanted. I wanted to see the end of Raw. I didn't want to fade to black in the middle of a beat down or in the middle of a monologue or in the middle of a promo. I wanted the end of the I wanted the show to end properly. Yeah. You know, and James, like you and I were talking about, you know, how we were talking about we would like to see the legacy come back. Yeah, you know, I would like to see uh, Cody Rhodes, uh, Randy Orton, the Usos, and maybe Solo in there. That'd be a good. I guess you're right there. Yeah, I'm in good stable. But I just thought Randy can come back at some point. Well, <laughs> as of right now, I'd love to see Randy. Back as a performer. His return to the ring is questionable. 
Yeah, that's what I had heard. He could be a J.J. Dillon. You know, our, our Randy can come back as as uh, like a uh, mentor to the to any wrestler. That, that's what I mean. He could be a J.J. Dillon. He could be a manager. Yeah. You know, either if you like Randy or you hate Randy, you've got to admit he's a hell of an athlete. He's a hell of a performer. At the at the Randy. at the well, actually, still today, Arn Anderson is a pretty good manager. Like, like at the end of his career as a wrestler, he started becoming more of a manager, uh, mentor type of uh, uh, person. And I feel like Randy could easily fill that fill that role. Like, he doesn't need another world title run. He he's already done enough to cement his legacy as a you know a Hall of Famer. Like. Yes, for sure, Hall of Famer. If Randy isn't a, isn't a first ballot Hall of Famer, it's a it's Rick. Yeah, it's Rick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be in there like just like the Undertaker, uh, Cena. Uh, Triple Taker's a. already in. Yeah? Huh? Yeah. No, I mean Taker's already in. I, I know. Oh, okay. Okay, guys, let's move on. If we have time, at the end, we can get back to uh, Heyman yeah. came out to talk with Solo. Jay came out to tell which side, which side. So, uh, let's see, okay. Jay came out to tell which side, but was put in the U.S. title match in the main event. Uh-huh. Sato Escobar beat Sakali in the money to make money in the bank match. Uh, WWE Women's Champion Ronda Rousey and Bay Silver Stokes never won the big money back to the Anyhow, they don't deserve them. Mm-hmm. Because they haven't really beat uh, any top well, women's tag team in WWE. Uh, we're approached by the NXT Women's Champions of Far and Don about unifying the women's belts. And they will, they will unify the belts not this weekend, not this, not tomorrow, but next week. Um, maybe mm-hmm. it's uh, Machine. Uh, me, um, same thing. Mention. Terry and Cross yeah. and Pollock attack at <laughs> Styles. And of course, Bailey is in, is in the Money to Bank Lottie match with her uh, damage control partner, Ito, Ito Sky. Yeah. E, uh, Ito Sky beats, beats Sasuke to enter. Butch beats Baron Corbin. Oscar presented with new belt. Uh, Charlotte challenges Oscar for match at Emma. At Money in the Bank, I still tries to miss, miss, but miss, but missed. Mm-hmm. May cause a controversy with Bianca Belair getting promised a rematch. Cameron Grimes attacked Baron Corbin backstage. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, he, right. yeah, another feud. <laughs> Austin Theory. I hate Corbin. Mm-hmm. Austin. Theory beats Jay Uso to retain the title. Pretty deadly attack Jay, which made Jimmy come out to save the save and solo attack Jimmy, which made Jimmy accidentally super kick Jay, costing his brother the match and title for the storyline heading into tomorrow's SmackDown. So tomorrow's SmackDown is is uh, going to be awesome. Yeah, Roman Reigns. Yep. Mm-hmm. Raven Boss. The Grayson Waller effect with Charlotte Flair. Roman Reigns returns to make to uh, have to make Jay make a decision. Yeah. Uh, Machine and AJ Styles versus Karrion Cross and Scarlett in a mixed match. Gauntlet for the number one contendership. Whatever that is. Uh, yeah. it's a it's a gauntlet match for the number one contendership for the tag titles to face KO and uh, Sammy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now here's here's what here here is a good a good one here, guys. This it was LWO versus Pretty Daily versus Rollins Brutes versus the LC versus Street Profits. So that's gonna be a good one for the for gauntlet match. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder what members of LWO is actually going to be out there. 
It, it's going to be uh, uh, Mendoza, Mysterio. Mendoza and Wild. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Oklahoma, <coughs> they three-peat as champions in the women's, in the women's College World Series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, three-peat, yeah. The men's College Series is coming up uh, starting tomorrow. Yes. Uh, number one is Wake Forest. Number two is uh, Florida. Number five Florida. is L- is LSU. Number eight is Stanford. Then Tennessee and TCU. Yep. And Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. And now, who who heard who's heard about this? Jacksonville pending a new stadium if approved. They could possibly be playing games at Daytona until that stadium is built. Yes, hmm. if they don't, if Daytona rings the bell, that's that's where they race the Daytona 500. Yes, I right. have more fans at the stadium than the new stadium. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I I, I just thought that that was very interesting to have a uh, a football game at a a track like that. That's like having the one at like Talladega or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it'll work at Daytona. It's just Daytona's too big. Yeah, uh, I, don't I, know. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it happening at Daytona. You'd have to. I don't know if you could play. I don't know if you could like because they did it at Bristol about eight years ago now. I think it was 2016 when they yeah. had the night the, the infield, yeah. Tennessee and whoever. I don't remember who it was, but uh, I know it was Tennessee, but I forget who they played. And, and, like, that worked because of the way Tennessee is, the way Bristol is built. So Bristol is built, is, is, a, is a bowl. And they have, you know, seats all the way around. And I think, I think if tenants, if they get approved for the, the, the funding for the new, for the renovations, so they get approved, I think the NFL will try playing them, having them play their season in London. I think the NFL will have them play eight, eight or nine games in London as an experiment to see if that'll work. And if that works... I agree. Oh, they can have, play at the Full of Gators Stadium, Gainesville. Yeah, I've heard that too. They could play in Gainesville, which would work. The swamp is big enough. They could play in the swamp. That wouldn't be a big deal. Um... And if they, but if the only problem with them playing moving to London after dropping one point two five billion dollars on a new stadium is the one point two five billion dollar contract that they just paid for, you know. <laughs> it is. Um, Florida uh, now uh, MLB standings real quick in the AL West. Uh, we got Tampa Bay. They're sitting at forty eight and twenty one. AL Central is Minnesota at 33 and 33. Ooh, that's not good. Ooh. What the uh, heck? AL West, we got we got my Rangers uh, still holding on to uh, first place at 41 and 24. NL East, we got Atlanta holding 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 there on on at 40 and 26. Uh, AL Central, we got Milwaukee at 34 and 30. NL West is the uh, is Arizona at forty one and twenty five. We still got a lot. Of, we still got a lot of baseball to go, guys. Yeah, we still got a month before the All Star break. Mm hmm. So, so any, anything could uh, happen. Now, yeah, well, yeah. Unless, unless, of course, you're the Royals or the A's. I mean, their season's already over. <laughs> Oh, speaking of the A's, did you see what you see what they what the uh, fans were chanting at the stadium the other night? What's that? Yes. Yeah. So they they sold a whole bunch of seats. They sold like twenty five thousand seats, and they started chanting "Sell the team" so loud that it disrupted the uh, the pitcher's communication. He thought he broke. He thought his his communication system had broke. Yeah. Now you Speaking of the A's, 
speaking of the A's, um, Nevada has approved the new stadium for three hundred eighty million. Got it on a deal, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not a bad break. Your team sucks, and you know you you, and you know your team is moving. Now you decide to show up. Yeah, it's a little late for that. Exactly. You can't save the team now, buddy. Now we all know that the Longhorns are moving into uh, the SEC come next year. Yes. Not yes. this season. The next. The next season. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Twenty four. Okay. Twenty four. Twenty five season. And thanks to James, he was able to uh, get the schedule for uh, for the first year of the Horns being in the SEC. Looks tough. I'm seeing. Adam and I went over this uh, the other night on the phone. I see them going nine and three. Possibly. I see. I see seven and five. But here's but here's the schedule, guys. Seven and five. They open. Oh, seven and four actually. They opened. Uh, okay, so they now opened they play twelve games. They open the zero week at Colorado State. Zero. Then week. they go to then they go to Ann Arbor to play the Michigan. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> we get it. We get it. No chance. Uh, yeah. Then, then uh, they're back to play UTSA, which is University of San Antonio. Okay, that's a win. Uh, ULM, whoever ULM is. University of Louisiana Monroe. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a win. That's gonna be a win. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Then they go to uh, Dallas to play the Oklahoma Sooners. Win. Uh, that's a loss. No, it's a win. Depends on whether OU is bounced back or not. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, I think they will. <laughs> then they go to uh, Arkansas to play the Razorbacks. Oh, shit. That's going to be a tough one, but yeah. I'm going to put it in the open. This is so far out that it's really kind of silly. Arkansas is an old uh, SWC uh, rival. Yeah, the Southwest Conference. Yeah, Southwest Conference. Uh, then they play Florida. Ooh, I, that, don't know. That, we don't know what Florida's going to look like in the, in a year and a half. We we yeah. have no idea of knowing what they're going to look like in a year and a half. And we don't know Can what Georgia's going to look like in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then they play Kentucky. That's a win. Mississippi State. Ooh. That should be a win. That should be a win. Yeah. Then. The all-time greatest rivalry is going to be renewed. Texas and, and Texas A&M. Texas and Texas A&M. Yeah. But that, that, that should be a win. That yeah, we have to go to Kyle Field yeah. for that. I'm hoping they they put this game. I hope I'm hoping they make this a Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Because. Back in the day before before Anium left to go to the SEC, that was the annual Thanksgiving Day game. Yes, it was. They played that game every year on Thanksgiving. Or yep. actually Black Friday, right? I think so. It was Black Friday today. And that's one game I love to watch on Thanksgiving with Texas and Texas a Yeah. Because those two played their hearts out. No love lost, man. Uh-huh. They gave, they left everything on the field. And then the last game of the season is going to be at Vanderbilt. That's a bye week. <laughs> Vanderbilt. And we all know that Vanderbilt is not a football school. It's more of a basketball school. Exactly. Yeah, that's even a basketball baseball. school. Baseball. 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 Morant got a whole season. But they say they suck in football. Oh, they're horrible. So. Oh. Even my high school team is better than Vanderbilt. <laughs> exactly. We don't know how Michigan's going to look in a year and a half. Mm, no. We don't know who's going to be. look. We don't know who's going to look in a year and a half. 
Bro. We don't know. I mean, we don't know how these things are gonna look in a month and a half. Just so. Schedule, guys. Okay. Just by looking at the schedule, I'm gonna say nine and three. They could. They could go nine and three. They could go zero and eleven. They, they could. They could. Zero oh, and twelve. They, they could. They could go. I'm just saying nine and three as of right now. But eight and four. When, yeah. But when they move in, but when this move becomes official. And I sit down and look at each team's record at the at the end of this season. Yeah. Then I can make a better uh, prediction. I, right. I say eight and four. A green with blue. Yeah. Possibly eight and four, and still and still make a bowl game. Yeah. You said zero and twelve, Devin. But yeah, right. I'm correcting. I, I was uh, I was correcting Adam. He said 0 and 11. He they could go 0 and 11. I'm like 0 and 12. The only thing that makes scare me when we move up, when we move over to the SQC is, is he good. wasn't serious though. He's saying they could go, not they all. But no, yeah, obviously. No, I was just making my my point was is that, that this is reckless speculation. <laughs> You know, we're you know, we're we're eighteen months out from any we're eighteen months out from any of these games. You know, we still have a whole season to play in the in the Big Twelve and so you know, yeah. getting ahead of ourselves and looking that far in the future, I'm not I'm not worried about Texas in two years. I'm worried about whoever we have for I forget who we open up with in, in September now off the top of my head, but whoever that would be, that's who I'm worried about, you know. Uh, this is this is. I don't like these super early release schedules no, because it's a it's a distraction. You know, it, it you you got to keep. You know, this is you know where your great coaches separate themselves from the good coaches. It's the ability yeah. to keep everybody focused on this year, this week. You know, the, the the games that we have in front of us that are coming up in two months, three months, whatever. You know, three months now. You know, yeah. getting getting everybody ready for fall camp and keeping everybody focused on on the, the task at hand and, and playing our best, playing the best football we can play in 2023-2024. And then worrying about 24-25 when, when, we, when we flip the calendar over and we finish this season. Adam, did you, uh, what's your thoughts on the Nuggets winning the NBA championship? I, I love Joker. Yeah, I thought he was great. Yeah, have you seen? Did anybody else see any of his private press conference stuff? Uh-uh. From, uh, oh yeah, it was it was hilarious. He, they were asking him about um, the parade. He's there asking about you know if he was there. Well, they when when they won the championship, they asked him if he if he you know how he felt. He was like, eh, it feels good, you know. And he, you know he's um in Serbian or something like that, Slovakian. And he's from he's from Eastern Europe, and and he was just you know. Ready to be done, ready to go home, <laughs> and um, and they were asking him in in, in the post game press conference after they won Game Five. They were they were asking him about the parade on, and he was like, "Oh, when is parade?" They told him it was Thursday. He's like, "No, I got to go home." He, I, 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 he, I find him very endearing. He just kind of a just kind of a dude. Now, is it is it a surprise to you that he won uh, MVP of the finals? Not really, no. Not at all. I, I think he was well deserved. I think he earned it. I mean, he averaged a triple double, like, or a double. He averaged like a double double in 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 the 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 cover or in the championship. I mean, how can you take it? who who else is gonna who else are you gonna give it to? And uh, what's your takes on the Golden Knights winning the Stanley Cup? Well, congratulations to Vegas. I would have liked to have seen them beat the Blues a couple of years ago, but you know, better late than never. You know, right. Um, and there's yeah. two, there's two milestones that happened in sports in sports uh, entertainment this year. One, the golden, uh, the golden, I mean, gold, the Nuggets finally won an NBA title. Yeah. Right, first their first in history. And and, the, and and the Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup for the first time in their history. Also, they're the fastest expansion franchise to have ever won a title. Yep. Yeah. And also, two Fuller teams are lost in the championship series. That's true. And now, uh, before we go into uh, 
before we go into Devin's uh, soccer news, which it should be great. He Devin never disappoints me with with his soccer update, guys. No. If anybody watching the show, if you if y'all have any questions about soccer, Devin Gordy's the man to go to. Thank you. I appreciate it. This man can sit there and tell you yes. everything you need to know about soccer. But here is the the preseason top ten in college football. Number one is Ohio State. Number yep. two is Alabama. Number three is Georgia. Number four is LSU. Number five mm-hmm. is Texas. Number six is Michigan. Number seven is USC. Eight is Clemson. Nine is Notre Dame. Ten is Penn State. I don't. How? Agree. I don't agree with them putting mm-hmm. putting us at number five. Yeah, that's I, for us right now. And I don't know what crack they smoke to keep Notre Dame in the preseason top ten every year, but I like some. Yeah, even though they don't deserve it. They, they they always get they always sneak into the preseason top five or top ten, and then and then they they end up eight and four. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too. You know, and like I said, Texas, you know, don't get me wrong, as you can see in the shirt, it says hook them. Hook them. You know, okay. I, I'm, you can ask my wife. Saturday, it's the Longhorns. Sunday, it's the Cowboys. But I don't agree with us being at number five for the preseason poll. I think it's too high. I think it's too soon. I I think that I I I think fifteen would I probably would have had them at fifteen. I say at least I say anywhere from eleven to fifteen. And I would have had Georgia at one. I would have had Georgia one. Yeah, because Georgia. I would have had Alabama two. Ohio State Georgia three. Won, Georgia did win the national title. And, and they and they're not they they and they reloaded. They they're not going anywhere anytime soon. No, so yeah, Georgia. Here's how I would have done it. I would have put Georgia at number one, Alabama at number two, LSU. I think it's too early to put LSU up that high. Yeah. Yeah. I would have had Ohio State at three. Yeah. Michigan four. Yeah. Uh, Then I can slot LSU at five. SC at six. Uh, Penn State seven. Um, trying to think offhand. Here's the list again, Adam. It's Ohio. State, yeah. Right. Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Texas, Michigan, USC, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Penn State. I think I would go Clemson at eight. Um, I. I'd have to see the expanded to, yeah, you know, like who's who's the rest of the top twenty-five are. Um, oh, Oregon's at thirteen. Yeah, I think I'd move Oregon up to nine. Yeah, Florida State um, and Utah. Uh, Florida State could be ten, or Utah. You know, either any, any. Florida State's done a lot of good things. They look healthy. Uh, I'm excited for Colorado. Let me let me see if I can bring up the top the top twenty five real quick. Sounds My good. Time. I'm excited to see what he can do with a real team. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I almost got a cramp on my toe. Oh, I hate that. When that happens, I hate when I get a cramp in my chest. Pectoral muscle, like you, like you know where your where your shoulder yeah. meets your like right in there. It's like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Okay, this not showing me anything. So, but David, I'm doing this. Go ahead and uh, do your soccer report while I'm looking for this real quick. All right. So, first of all, 
there was breaking news last week, but I was away. But the great Leo Messi, for the Argentina champion, World Cup champion, is going to Miami in Major League Soccer. Yep. He's going to be, be cut. In his deal, he's going to be take his pay with Apple and Adidas. So that's his sale. That's part of his deal. Since he's a sponsored by both. And then, I don't know if there's going to be... Then he has the option to buy a, a stake in any MLS team when he's done playing retirement, in for retirement. That's, that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. And also, in Miami, in you know, Miami, that all the tickets are sold out for the rest of the season. I, yeah. It's like, well, I mean, it's like Gretzky going to the Kings. Yeah. yeah. Or Beckham, when Beckham went to the Galaxy. Yep. Or I like that. What did he say? I like, I was going to just say, I like the, the ownership stage because that's, that, that's, you know, money ain't got to work for me. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm looking for is one of them kind of deals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So make my money, make me money. Yep. Also, Manchester City, their triple crown winners, what the horse horse racing people say. They won Premier League, the Football Association Cup, and the Champions League, the UEFA Champions League over in the Milan. Oh. One one zero. Yep. Yuck. So Man City is a triple crown winner or they call it Trumbull when you're winning your know, domestic league. Season, your domestic league um, season, and the European Championship. Yeah, and also we got um, UEFA Na- Nations League Championship tournament going on. Um, is that see. is that European teams? Yeah, U- UEFA. Yeah, the Union. Uh, the Union of European Football Association. That's like Belgium and Germany and France and all them. Yeah. So in the turn, so they're having a four a four team tournament. So they did a um, Sunday finals yesterday and the day before. Yeah. Is the part of ensemble? Yeah. Yeah. So Carissa defeated the Netherlands four two, in final extra time. And then Spain defeated Italy 2-1. to one. So in the championship game would be Carissa versus Spain. And third place game, Netherlands versus Italy. Great. Both games on June 18th. Okay. Father's Day. Yep. And then also, CONCACAF, the Confederation of North America, Caribbean, Central America, like the U.S., Canada, in that region. So they're having their own Nations League tournament. Right now, Canada is playing Panama hmm. in, in Vegas. Right now. Well, well, they can't play it in Canada because Canada's on fire. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Too much maple syrup over there. Yeah. What do you Canadians know about soccer? It's not, it's not played on ice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway. And then after... After this game, the United States will renew the rivalry against good old Mexico. I like playing. Mexico's always a fun team to play. They, they play hard. They are, yeah. They are. Yeah. And also, in this tournament, the United States will get a chance to defend the championship. So we're going to have yeah. our, like a, a, a team, like a World Cup team roster. I remember. I remember about gosh, probably twenty years ago now, fifth, definitely easily, easily fifteen, eighteen years ago, mid two thousands, trying to get into soccer. And I watched the whole summer of soccer, and I enjoyed it. But I was like, and then football came back, and I never got back into soccer. Yeah, I got really into soccer for three months, and then never got back into it again. I'm always been interested in soccer. I so. I love I love live soccer. Like soccer in person is so much more fun. And soccer on TV. It is. 
So United States versus Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, United States versus Mexico after Panama and Canada game. The winners two games will play each other for the championship, and the loser will play in the third place game. Okay. And then, yep. then six days after the Nations League tournament, we're gonna have Gold Cup okay. tournament action. So Nicaragua has been this. Um, they've been banned from this edition of the tournament due to playing an ineligible player for eight matches. How does that? Ha- okay, I have a question, and I'm, I'm in all seriousness. How does that happen? So it's saying like you say you're American player, but you play for Mexico. Mm-hmm. Claiming, that you're Mexican. Claiming that you're but Mexican. But how do, do they not just do they not run a background check on these guys? How does it like? Could you imagine like like okay, think of like for my you know it's like you don't get to enter in into a game if you're not on the roster. Like how do you get on a roster? If you're not eligible, I don't know. That's my that's that's my question. Yeah, some people they have like connections, they can like fake documents because in the article of FIFA, you gotta have documentation or proof saying that you're Mexican heritage or any nation's heritage. Right. From, from your parents. But. But do they not? Do they just not vet this guy? Is that is that what is that what it all comes down to? So. They just because I couldn't I couldn't imagine a guy who was like then they just picked up some random guy who had who was I, I couldn't imagine Buffalo putting a guy on the field the the Buffalo Bills putting a guy on the field who wasn't eligible like how that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then that's just this, like I couldn't imagine you. You know, you don't just get to show up at F one and put a car in, and run a Corolla. <laughs> you know what I'm? You know what I'm saying? You know, you know. I just, yeah, I, I just, how, how that is an indictment of everyone in that situ- situation from because I'm not. That would be who? Who's that? Who? Uh, who's in charge of that? It's is it? Is it FIFA? It's FIFA. It's all FIFA. It's through the 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 Concord. Right. People. Yeah. How does so, everyone everyone from the top down drop the ball on that one? Yeah, they drop the ball, but there's so many <laughs> people that can get get um away with it and and to find out they got they have fake um fake documentation on them. I just that just seems like there was a complete lack of, of quality control on the part of FIFA and Con Concaf or what however you say that Cut the calf. Cut the calf. No, yeah, I just I wanna know and that's my question is where did it break down so bad that an ineligible player was allowed to start and <laughs> in eight matches? Or or play I don't know if he started. Yeah, it's yeah. play. He played eight matches, so so there's a cycle of FIFA officials that have to check background on players well, stating, we, their, we, stating that they're from a heritage, like saying I'm a, I'm American, so I gotta have documentation like like a birth certificate. Right, I understand that. There must have been a damn good fake then. <laughs> Exactly. So the punishment for Nicaragua is they're banned from this edition of the tournament. Mm-hmm. So Trinidad and Tobago will enter the tournament when they play, when they place second in the group from qualifications. So was was uh, was uh, Trinidad and Tobago the next man up then? The first one out. Yeah. The first, technically, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I just I saw that the other day, and I was wondering what where the breakdown was in the vetting process because I can't imagine I can't imagine a ineligible you know like an ineligible man on the field in an NFL game like he plays one play and it's a five yard penalty and he's removed from the game yeah. this, this just doesn't happen like you don't yeah. just get to show up 
You don't just get to show up and throw pads on and go, hey, you know, I'm here to play for Buffalo. <laughs> same concept, same concept. And, but then but but then I was just thinking about it. It's like we know how corrupt that FIBA is. Or FIFA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember I was talking to you a couple weeks ago about you bringing uh, your uh, ridiculous story of the week onto the show? Mm. Well, I did find, I did hear something interesting that a woman paid $180 uh, for parking tickets to go to the uh, Oakland A's game. Like, why would you want to pay that much to get to see the team that doesn't even have anybody? I mean, the, the whole thing was just a, like a, a complete, you know, just absolutely ridiculous. No one even goes to that. I mean, you think that we pay, well, we pay um, here in the New York area a lot. I mean, $180 to see a team that has actually no business playing in the major leagues anyway. No wonder they're, they're going to get out and go to Vegas. Who want to pay $180 to see a team that has complete trash? You say yeah, 180 they, or 108? I said 180. Still, that's a lot to go to 180. Yeah. To go Who to a team that's in a trash. Their right mind would pay $180. Well, it depends. Who do they pay? Well, Devin, I mean, I mean, Joe, nobody said she was in her right mind anyway. So there you go. Yeah, but who are they playing? One hundred eighty dollars to go see a team that has that doesn't have a prayer. I mean, you're 15, maybe they. You're fifteen and fifty-one. You have no chance at all. You're moving to Vegas anyway. Why would you pay all much to go see that to see that kind of a team for that display? Of, yeah. hey, it depends on. If she wants to give a, if she wants to give away $108, I take it. One eight zero. One eight zero. A hundred and eighty. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I take my that question. I take that my, my question is who are they playing? A team that beat them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it depends. Like if she you know, if she was from, let's say the Yankees were in town. She wanted to go see, you know, it's the only time the Yankees are going to be in in Oakland. I mean, there are reasons why you would want, you know, she doesn't have to necessarily go as an Oakland fan. She could be a Yankees fan or a Braves fan. I mean, she could be a Braves fan. They haven't played in, you know, she moved out to California for work or whatever. You know, like yeah. Devin, you live in, you know, Devin, Devin lives in, in New Mexico. It's not like he can go uh, get on, you know, it's not like you can walk over to the, you know, the Falcons game, but if, the, if Atlanta's playing Arizona, you know, I could see him, you know, paying $500, you know, whatever the equivalent, you know, some ridiculous number for tickets to a, to a Falcons game or a, a, a Cardinals game. You know, yeah, the Cardinals, the Cardinals are one and eight. And are, aren't gonna aren't very good, but he's not there to see the Cardinals. He's there to see the Bra or the the Falcons. So I mean, okay, but still, I mean, you know, there is that bad. So you know, but if you're not going there to see Oakland, if you're going to see the other, if you're going to see the away team, you know, especially if you're going to see the away team, you know, <laughs> at, yeah, I'd rather go see a if I'm a if I'm an opposing fan. Yeah, I, I'd rather go see them away if they're bad. You know, like I'd, I'd rather go to a game where I know there's not going to be a whole lot of home fans if I'm rooting for the away team. Yeah. Because I'm less likely to get, go to see a team like that. <laughs> because I'm not going. I'm going to see my team beat the bad team. Yes, that's much more fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I would I would uh, stay at home where I can watch it in my underwear than actually go to the game. Yeah. I went to a Braves game earlier this year. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, we had a blast. Maybe next year I can check one thing off my bucket list. That is the plan. Get to go to a live NASCAR event down here in Austin, Texas. At second, at second of the America, and Adam, um, I got one thing ready already. I got, I got my, I got my uh, Rollator Walker, so I'm ready to go. Right on. So that, so that way, help that would help me uh, walk through, walk across the parking lot, get into, get into the, the stadium. 
Yeah, I'm going to start looking into that here probably next month, start putting it together. And, uh... Or August. I think... When, when it's what, next March, isn't it? Yeah, the mid-March. It should yeah. be. I'm, the 2024 schedule hasn't dropped yet, so... Yeah. But I'll start putting some money back for it here in a couple weeks. Sorry, what did I miss? Because I was away. Nothing. Uh, oh, fine then. Lou just gave us his uh, ridiculous story of the week. Mm-hmm. 108, $180. $180. You know what I could do with that $180? Well, you can't buy the team, that's for sure. Are uh, you sure? Yeah, no, maybe that's the value. Mm. But I yeah. tell you one thing, no. The the hundred and eighty dollars would go would, would would go real good for the for the network. Yes, it would. Probably our network worth more than the A's. Yeah, but we <laughs> but we won't broadcast the Oakland A's games. Oh, okay. No. At this point, I think I think one hundred eighty dollars could buy Bally Sports. And also, nothing yes. too. We will not be we will not be advertising. We will not be broadcasting any Yankees games. Maybe we have about Bally oh, Sports. Oh, games. any Texas games. Hey, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right, wait a minute. Maybe we buy a share of uh, Bally Sports. We're we 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 now. We can do Texas games. We can do Texas and, and Dallas. Yeah. Now nah, I won't watch Dallas. <laughs> I figured that. Oh, but okay. Yeah, I watch. Yeah. I I watch. I watch Texas, but I won't root for them. Okay. Uh, well, that's what you did. You, you and the Cowboys, as much as I hate the Red Sox. Okay. <laughs> we'll put it that Since way. you are a uh, Arizona uh, Cardinals fan, I mean Falcons fan. I almost said Cardinals. Atlanta you Falcons. Atlanta Falcons fan. Three birds. Who do you think should get the starting quarterback position? Desmond Riddle, hands down, Desmond Riddle, yeah, because go ahead. because Desmond Riddle, he's young. He he's like a um pro style offense like Marcus Mariota. I think he did better than what Marcus Mariota did in the first place. He should have been the starter since we were like three and five, three and six, and we came back when he was a starter, and we almost won the division with him. But I, but I, I, one uh, thing I'll say, the defense, it sucks. Our defense was Achilles Hill. I keep saying this since 2013, 2014. Our Achilles Hill is defense. We play too much zone. We should be playing man in a 4-3 or 3-4. That defense is what? Uh, that defense really, really needs, needs work. You gotta play. You gotta have. You gotta have athletes to play zone. Yeah. And just like, just like Adam and I were talking, if you have a good defense but a bad offense, you're gonna lose. If you have a good offense but a bad defense, you're gonna lose. You know how bad the Falcons' offense has been in the last five years? How bad has it been? How bad? How bad? How, how, bad? Bad, how bad can you get? We we're probably like third, um, third worst defense ever, every season. Oh. Now that sucks. That's bad. Except for 2016 when we should have won the Super Bowl. That's worse yeah. than that's worse than being in, in the garbage dump. Yeah. It is a garbage dump. But that's a that's a different topic. Yeah, but I think I think this year the well, I definitely think this year the uh, the NFC South is wide open. Uh, I don't think there's a clear front runner in the South. Uh, I, I mean, I every single team in the South has question marks at quarterback. Uh, every team but, has has defensive struggles. You know, and that's like the, um, I don't like, the same thing with with the NFC East. It's wide open because we don't know what we don't know what Dallas is going to do. We don't know what Philly's going to do. We don't know what Washington's going to do. We don't know what the Giants are going to do. For the NFC South, they just got to pick, put the four teams in a hat and just pick one. That's how the division winner is going to be. 
Same yeah, be honest. probably. Same way with the East, because you know, last last year, everybody thought Dallas was going to win it. Everybody thought yeah, the Giants were going to win it. Everybody thought Washington was going to win it, but who ended up winning it? The Eagles. Yeah. I, I think I think it's I think the South, the West East is um I mean the East is still East to lose. I I just I, I agree. I just don't see. I don't see them having fun. I could see them having a Super Bowl hangover. You know, we'll have to wait and see. They could end up with an, They could end up on a Super Bowl hangover. Now I, yeah. see, the, I see the Chiefs having that Super Bowl hangover too. No, no, not a shot. Speaking well, of the, speaking of the NFL, did you see they released the Madden cover for this year? Yeah, Josh Allen. Josh Allen got the cover. Yeah. Yep. Well, sorry, Buffalo. The curse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in curses. Hey, look what look what happened. Look look what's happened to the Cowboys. They they're under the Jimmy Johnson curse. Exactly. Look what's going on with the Raiders. They're under the Madden curse. The what curse? The Raiders. The men. Oh yeah, yeah. They won. They won a title after Madden left. Eighty four. Tom Flores. Yeah. But if, that was the last title was in eighty four. Yeah, like Tom Flores. They they came close. They came close a couple years. Two thousand two. Yeah. Last time they made the Super Bowl, and they got their asses handed to them by John Gruden. Yeah, and John Gruden hold a grudge. I think. Yeah. Yeah, Green wanted Green wanted that one bad. Tampa two of, defense. And the coach of uh Michigan, what's his name? Michigan Wolverines, what's his name? Uh Harbaugh? Yeah, Harbaugh. Jim. He's already saying he's not coming back to the NFL. For now. I, I don't see it. He's mine. Neither do I. Because he's got now. he's got something going on in Michigan. Yeah, two years ago, I thought there was definitely a possibility he could either get fired or come back, you know, go back, you know, be for the NFL. And at this point, I just don't, I just don't see it. And there's just, he finally got them, uh, you know, I look at, I look at a guy like, you know, Dabo Sweeney, you know, and how they wanted him run out of Clemson on a rail and they were ready to get rid of him. And, um, then they got Deshaun Watson, and they got it figured out, and they finally won a, you know, and they finally broke through and won a title. And then they had Trevor Lawrence that won another title, and you know it's, you know, I can I can definitely see Michigan competing for titles for the next three to five years. We'll see because they got they just signed a, uh, a five star recruit quarterback for next year, and. Um, Point that Adam, I hear, I hear all the time with these Longhorn fans. Okay, look how, look how bad they were saying. Look how bad uh, Stark was with the horns. Give the man time. Yes, you gotta have patience. If this, was, if this was his third or fourth year, and they didn't make it to the Big Twelve title game or the national title game, yeah, then it's time to start looking for another coach. Yes. Yeah. Unless you know, you know, it's you have well, you know, yeah. The early, early and mid two thousands, they were a top five, a perennial top five team in effect to win it all every year. And then they, then they had one bad season under Matt Brown and fire him. Exactly. And and. They haven't been able to fix it ever since because it's not every three years. They get a new coach. They're they're letting they're 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 changing coaches, you know. And it's it's hard to build a winning program. And and the the thing about it is, is that recruiting with Alabama, Georgia, LSU, and Florida, when you when you're recruiting against those four teams. Oh, those four teams alone, and, and the, 
it's not even, you know, we're not even talking about the other teams that, that, that you have to recruit with. You know, the Michigans, the, the Ohio States, the Penn States, the Alabama. USC's. No, no, I already said Alabama. Alabama, Georgia, Florida, LSU. You know, you're, when you have to compete in that against those four teams, you know, because those are the best, those are the four best teams in the world right now. And these things are cyclical. For now, right as it sits right now, those are the four best teams in the country. You know, those are the four best recruiting teams consistently over the last 20 years in the country. And, you know, getting, luring talent away from those teams, convincing those, convincing those players to come to your school. And the other thing is, is, you know, and it's not just, you know, it's not just money or, you know, or an athletic program. It's also the academic program that you have to, to finesse too, because, you know, at the end of the day, the athletic the athletic department wants athletes, and the academic part department wants scholars. And you know you're competing. You know you're competing with the a lower standard at a place like an Alabama or a Georgia, a lower academic standard. You know, for schools that have higher academic standards, it's harder to recruit a kid who might be a top tier athlete but is a low tier scholar. And I'm not saying, not to say that they're stupid. Or that they, you know, that they're, you know, incompetent or they're, you know, they're a bad student, but they just don't have the academic qualifications to attend a Texas, a Michigan, a, a, you know, a UCLA, Stanford, you know. Um, sorry, Every now and to, sorry to interrupt, but I got to go leave you guys. Have a good one, bud. I'm going right. to check the time, too. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, we're, I'm going to be ending this here pretty soon. And also, you know, another thing, too, that... That uh, comes into play now is this NIL deal, right? Yeah. You know, it's like okay, Alabama promises me this. What can you promise me? Can you beat what Alabama is offering me? Ooh, that's that's part of it. It's also there's also the idea of you know what. And these, and these kids that are coming that are coming into college. They want to play for these uh, national titles. They want to play for the conference championship. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, and you have a team like Texas, you know, that last time we won a Big 12, I mean, the national title was in 2005. Right. Right. And if you get a top five recruit come in, and they tell me, like, okay, well, last time Texas won the national title was 2005. But here's Georgia. They won it last year. You know, and they've won it the last two years. Screw Texas. I'm going, I'm going over to Georgia. Well, also, you also have to look at the fact that the, the thing we talk about a lot is the fact that the Big 12 isn't a strong conference outside of Texas and Oklahoma. Exactly. And, you know. and with Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12 now, and ACC, the Big 12 is going to fold. Potentially, because I've heard Colorado may come back to the Big Twelve. But that's but Colorado cannot make up for a loss of Texas and Oklahoma. Well, they can stabilize the the conference and keep it afloat. Um, but you know the thing about it is, is that with with the recruiting and you know and and, and not playing the Georgia's, Florida's, and Alabama's every year, you know it, it makes recruiting hard. You know, if you're only playing one good team every year or two, you know, it's hard to recruit. You know, when you when you go to Alabama, you know you're getting Florida, Georgia. You know you're going to get Florida. You know you're going to get Georgia. You know you're going to get LSU. You know you're getting Arkansas. You know, you know, and then the other, the middle of the pack is still going to be going to be at least competitive. The Oklahoma, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, Mississippi. Mississippi, Mississippi State, you know, Mizzou can be tough. Kentucky can be tough. Arkansas can be tough. You know, and you get, you're going to get a half a dozen primetime games a year. Big matchups. And they're going to showcase, that it's going to give you an opportunity to showcase your talent and make an impression on, on scouts and, and, and the next level. You know, if you're, if you're a three-star athlete, that if you're looking at, if, if, Texas's offer is, is making you an offer, and Alabama is making you an offer, and let's say they're two hundred thousand dollars off. 
you can say, uh, let's say Texas offers you more money, but Alabama offers you better opportunities. You know, that that is going to make a huge difference on where, where you're willing to commit. So if, if Texas is offering you $1.2 million and Alabama is only offering you a million dollars, but Alabama is offering you opportunities above and beyond playing college football, and, and the fact that you're going to play a half a dozen primetime games every year that are going to have national attention, you know, it's, it's, very hard for, it's very hard for Texas to come in and say, hey, no, you should come to Texas, you know, especially, especially when you don't have to worry, you know, when Texas, you know, when Alabama isn't, when you can't go, well, you shouldn't go to Alabama because the weather there sucks. Have you ever been to Tuscaloosa in November? The weather doesn't suck in Tuscaloosa. It's nice. It's warm. It's calm. It's, you know, it's a very easy place to play. And then playing in the SEC, you know, playing in the Big 12, you can get into some bad weather games. You can play, you know, and, you know, you can have some cold, wet weather games. You don't have the cold, wet weather games in the Big in the in the, you don't, you might have wet, wet weather or wind, but you don't, it's not going to be cold. You know, it, the kickoff kickoff for at kickoff in November, three thirty kickoff in November is going to be sixty five and sunny in in Tuscaloosa, in in Gainesville, you know, in in Athens, you know, and and so it's you know when you're especially for for Midwest schools, it's it's really really hard to recruit right right now, especially without you know most state you know you don't have. You know you're going to play in a lot of bad weather games. You know you're going to play in a lot of cold, you know, when the calendar flips over to October. You get it in mid-October, and it could snow. And, and so, you know, the recruiting, recruiting in the, you know, is so much easier, you know, especially when, when schools like Alabama and, and Florida and Georgia, they do offer great academic programs. Getting a degree from Florida or Georgia or, or Alabama is going to offer you opportunities at the best, you know, to further your education at the best schools and are going to offer you to further your, your athletic career at the best and the best football, you know. Exactly. Well, before we go, Lou, do you want to plug your show for this week? Yeah. It has four shows Saturday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to do a lot of recapping. We got like with the uh, NHL and NBA Finals. Uh, French Open men's final, uh, the Preakness. We'll also take care of uh, MLB the last week of the regular season of the uh, USFL. Uh, US Open Golf Championships are going on right now, so of course we'll have an update on that. And any WWE and uh, UFC uh, information will pass that along to you. And it's also the annual Dads and Grad Show because uh, that ties in a lot, my like sixth year. And it's a milestone show. Uh, this this week, some of you know, some of you don't, but uh, I don't want to. He knows, he knows. I know, so, uh, but I'm not yeah, saying so, nothing. I'm not saying nothing. Y'all have to tune in to the show. So if you want to know, you'll have to tune in and find out, uh, or uh, look me, or look up on the uh, YouTube YouTube page on the style of course. We YouTube dial in the Enhanced Sports Show on YouTube, and you'll also find out why. Uh, or call in uh, 512-543-4662 on Saturday, 4 to 6, or in Gerald's case, 3 to 5 in the central time zone. So, but I'll, I'll give it to you. It'll be, it'll be a special show for obvious reasons. And another thing, too, before we go, I want to wish all the dads a happy Father's Day. Yes. And congratulations to the class of 2023, wherever you may be. Y'all did it. Y'all finished it. Now go out and do the same thing in college. Right. But I am work, so proud. College, one, workforce and get that get that job. I'm so proud of mm -hmm. all the all the graduates across across the United States. Well, and if you can't do that, join the army. <laughs> With that being said, I want to thank uh the I want to thank my my uh, favorite uh, guys for coming on. Uh, y'all stay cool out there. Stay out of trouble. And I'll catch y'all next week. And we are...
Got print, send it. And if you're in the East, stay dry.